Hey guys, I'm out in my garage again today. Welcome back to my art studio, Two Boy Magic. Sometimes I go by the nickname T-Rex. Cause why not? He was the king of the dinosaurs. Why not be the king of humans? Uh, today I thought I would paint three planets. I got these old bowls. Uh, these are just old bowls that I've, I think I picked them up at a thrift at like a garage sale, maybe for five bucks, two bucks, a dollar, I don't even know. I've had them for a while. These two I clearly have painted on a bunch of times. This one, not so much, because you can still see some of the bowl. Anyways, moving on. I'm gonna paint three planets in a diagonal line because diagonal lines are extremely pleasing to the human eye. It's a uh, brain development thing. And that's also why if you're overweight like me, first of all, I feel your pain. It's so hard to lose weight. Food is so yummy. And secondly, you should wear clothes with diagonal lines because they'll make you look slimmer. They'll be very flattering. Also, black is extremely thinning of a color to wear. All right, anyways, so I thought what I would do is I would show you three different ways to make easy planets. I'll show you three different ways to create very pretty textured planets. So first, I'm just going to outline all three of my planets. And then I'm going to move these bowls off to the side. Oop. Clink, clink, clink. Okay, so for colors, for this planet, I'm thinking, I'm thinking we'll do this planet the way I did the other ones, where, hmm, I just shook this purple off, too. All those yellows. Usually when you get those little circles like that, these little dots like that, that means that your spray paint isn't shook enough enough, or your nozzle is clogged or partially clogged which happens all the time. Anyone who's spray painted before knows that these nozzles clog up all the time. So a lot of times when I throw away an old container of spray paint, I keep the nozzle. It came out pretty good. So I use purple, magenta, a little bit of yellow. Is that all I want for this one? What if I add just a tiny bit of white? Just like a few highlights here and there. And then a tiny bit of black. Okay, so what we did, what I showed you how to do with the last couple of videos when I painted space, just take these two fingers or take your whole hand and just boom, 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 boom. Just go like this. Now, does that look too dark, do you think? If you think it looks too dark, I'll hit it with a little more yellow. And a little bit more white. And then we'll just rub this through and see. Is that better? Maybe a little more yellow, a little more white. This is one of the beautiful things about spray painting is you just, just keep going over and over and over. Just keep painting over and over until you get to where you like it. I want to say I really like that. So what I will do is I will you know what, I'm gonna wait till that dries to pop the bowl on top. I'm gonna paint my second planet now. And this one, I'm gonna do a different technique. I'll show you another way to make really easy, really easy, really pretty planet texture. So this one, I'm gonna spray dark blue on the bottom left. And then throw this lighter green in the middle. some red right here and cover up that spot of purple that happened to get over there. Okay, so really, really easy way to create a very effective texture is to take a piece of newspaper. I have this, I think this was a penny saver, uh, which is popular around here where I live. Ball it up like this. Ball it up like this. It's just a little crumple. Oops, and then rip a little piece of it off and have it fall on your painting, of course. Damn you, Murphy, and your stupid law. So anyways, take this balled up newspaper and just... And if you get too much of one color... Quick, quick, 
How do we like that for texture? That blue and that red are both awfully solid. So what I'm thinking I want to do is I want to pop down a little bit more green here and here. Maybe a little bit of white for some highlights. And maybe just the tiniest bit of black for shadow. And I'll just take another piece of this newspaper. Just ball it up however you want. Totally random. Just so that it gets some, so it gets all these wrinkles in it. Gets a little texture to it. Because then as you go, that will add that texture to your planet. And if a little piece of the newspaper rips off, like right there, just pick it up. Put it down this side, throw it out. All right, so now, I'm gonna say that that one looks pretty good for texture. Now let's move on to the third planet. One of my favorite ways to make a planet. I'm gonna show you guys a crater planet. First, I'm gonna put down dark blue. Let me just use all these. Let me make a rainbow planet. Dark blue, orange, light blue, green, red, purple. Just kidding, this totally random. White. Not too much black. Black can tend to take over. Let's put a little more orange in there because orange is so light. And this green's pretty light too. Let's see how this works out. For this one, again, we'll take a piece of newspaper. again and then fold again and then if you've got the finger strength <clears throat> fold it one more time this last fold is not going to come out that well but that's okay and then when you unfold your newspaper you should have a focal point right there a center point with a bunch of lines going out and what we're going to do is we're going to pop this down on top of this planet with this is the crater, wherever you want the crater. And then I'm just gonna gently rub this over all that paint that I put down. And then take a corner and whoop, And a little piece of the paper came off right here. Okay, so we picked that up. Is that showing up on camera? We got a little crater right there. It's kinda like an eyeball. One thing you can do is you can take, I'm gonna take a little black and put it right here on my fingertip. <laughs> black is very, this black is very runny. I'm just gonna spread myself a little bit. Take the black and then just go. And then we'll take white, do the same thing. Boop. To make sort of like a gray dot there. No, it really looks like an eyeball. <laughs> and there you have it, three different planet textures, all super easy to make. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna come back and cover up all three of those planets with the bowls and then I'll paint the background. So I'll be back in about 15, 20 minutes once this is dry to continue. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Hey guys, I'm back. It's been about, it's been about half an hour. I'm just sitting on the couch drinking a coffee, petting the dogs. All right, with these, yeah, it's dry. These planets are dry, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put 
this bowl down right about there. I'm gonna put this bowl down right about there. And I'm gonna put this bowl down right about there. Okay, so there we go. Uh, these bowls actually have a fair bit of weight to them. of those in there just for good measure just to hold it down now i'm going to double barrel now the easy part step number two after we painted the planets paint the whole black paint the whole background black i just almost said paint the whole black ground <laughs> paint the black ground black or paint the background black this is a, this is just gonna be the undercoating for space to, so most of this black is gonna get painted over, but some of it will show through. And it'll create little highlights, not highlights, the black will create little shadows here and there, a little bit of ambiance. Also because this black tends to go on, or go on opaque and then sort of dry a little bit less opaque. I'm gonna put a bunch of black on. Okay. So what color do we want to make the background? What color do I want to make space today? I really like this magenta color, which actually is called Porto on here, P-O-R-T-O. So let's put a bunch of this magenta color in here. I really like the way that turned out last time. Okay. Red too bright for outer space. Mm. Let me just put a little bit of red here and there. I do love this purple. One of the nice things about spray painting outer space like this is that when you paint it all like this while the paint is still wet, what happens is as it sits there, it blends for you. You don't have to hardly do anything at all. And the colors just blend for you. And a little bit more black on the corners, just one handed this time. And how does the background look? I think it needs more. There's still a few like weird spots of, of black poking through here and there. It's fine to have weird spots of black because you want to have. You don't want everything the same uniform color, but these are kind of weird. I'm just gonna keep painting over them a little bit. This is one of the nice things about spray paint. Just keep painting over everything until you get to something that you like. And if you don't get to something you like, just rip the painting in half and start over. <laughs> I mean, maybe don't rip the painting in half and start over, but you know. <laughs> If you're in the mood to just destroy something, destroy a piece of art that you created that you don't like. As Bob Ross used to always say, you hope you're plagued by dissatisfaction. And I think what he meant was that he, he said he hoped that you would always have a spot or two of your painting that you weren't overly fond of. Because then that inspires you to keep painting. Right? If there's a spot you're not overly fond of, do the same painting again and try to make it better next time. So he always said that it's not a bad thing to have parts of your painting you don't like. Right now what I'm going to do is try to create a little bit of a halo effect like I did in the other one. Again, I'm going to have the light coming from top right, coming in this way. So the shadow of the planet is down here, down here, down here. And then the highlight of the planet is on the other side. So I'm going to paint black right there. There's a lot of black right there. That one got a big old burst. Let me see if I can't get a little bit of blue. Purple. Magenta. 
Uh, where's my light blue? Actually, this is a little more of this magenta, and so I said I really liked it. And then I painted over a whole bunch of it. All right, now I'm gonna go back and hit this a little bit more black. Okay, and then a little bit white. What I'm doing is I'm trying to aim right about here on the rim of the bowl, so at the side of the spray, creates this nice and mist effect. Almost a yin and the yang. There we go. I'm gonna say that looks pretty good. Oh, almost forgot. My favorite part, let me flick on stars. So easy. Put paint on your fingers, flick straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down. Run out of paint, put some more paint in your glove. Flick straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down, straight up. Straight up, straight down, straight up, straight down, straight up. And again, you can add as many or as few stars as you want. Totally up to you. I personally like paintings with tons of stars. I think a million freaking stars looks great. Makes it realistic, but if you're a minimalist, you could also do just a few stars here and there. How does that look? Mm, I think this spot over here could use a few more. I'm thinking the bottom right corner down here to use a few more. So, as some of you guys know, I love bowling. The bowling alley is closed this week for July 4th. They decided to close the whole week. So I've been debating whether or not I want to drive 25, 28 minutes to bowl at different bowling alley. Or if I should just take the week off. All right, now I'm just going to kind of darken the corners a little bit. That corner got a lot of stars in it. There we go. And there we go. And I'm going to say this painting is done. I mean, not quite because I have to wait for it to dry. Come back in 15 minutes and coat it with clear glaze. But, uh, yeah, do the big reveal. But, uh, yeah. I'm just going to leave it like that, and I will be back in about 15 minutes to see the finished product. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Love you. Hey, guys. I'm back. Just trying to make sure that I was recording. The other day I was recording a video, I thought. Now I'm talking away, and I checked the screen, and I apparently never hit record. Anyways, I'm back. So I'm going to move these. And the only thing with using bowls is you don't have like a handle like my pot lid does. I'm gonna take a palette knife and unstick. Hmm. I like that. It's kind of subtle. Fairly muted. It looks kind of like a peach to me. Maybe a bruised peach. No, let's go with this middle one. Ooh, gimme, gimme, gimme. There we go. I like that one. Put this bowl over here. Looks like a planet that's half on fire, half water, and a little bit of islands in between. And now, the last one. So there you have it, easy, three planets, three different ways to do texture. I'm going to take this triple thick crystal clear glaze and oh, this is almost, my rest really just turned off. This one is almost empty.
and for the ladies to try it. Which really mask do you like the best? Which text do you like the best? Let me know. I will be back in about 15 minutes to just show you the final, final product once the glaze is dried. See you soon. Hey guys, I'm at my garage. It's about 24 hours later. I thought I would just put this in a neutral background. I'm actually holding the camera. Uh, let me know what you think about this painting in the comments below. Oh, look at that. My garage door light just turned on. Does that look different? No? Oh, my fingers are down there. Does that look different <laughs> between the, the garage door light on and garage door light off? I like the metal plant the best. That one was the easiest to do. I just took a bald up piece of newspaper and... So, like I always say, I'm not a... I'm a self-trained artist. I'm not a professional artist or anything, so... The way I make things is just the way they turn out. Which of these three plants do you like the best? Let me know.